Okay. Say hi to the stream. Maybe we should do another intro. This is probably gonna go on YouTube. Do you like treats? Do you like treats? Are you a fan of treats, dog? Yeah, when we went to the... There's this little shitty dog park. It's like this tiny little strip of dirt that has a fence. We went there this morning. There were actually other dogs in there. And whenever we're about to go inside, and there's other... if Basically, if there's other dogs, that when she's on leash, she barks at them like she wants to fight them. But once, like, the gate opens and she's next to him, she's all cool. She's like, oh, I'll smell your butt. So we got to play with some dogs this morning, didn't we? Did we get to play with some dogs? You don't care about that shit right now. Okay. 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 Let's begin. Welcome to Gameplay Update 7.22D. 7.22D. These are my first impressions. This is the first that I've read these. Other than when I got greedy and started reading this first page of things. I've read these all these first four already. All right, let's do it. Uh, when the patch came out literally an hour and a half ago at the end of the Epicenter Major. Um, and that is because the TI qualifiers are coming up soon. And for the exact date on that, I'm going to find out for you. I'm going to click over here. I'm going to scroll down a whole bunch. We already know about these. When is the TI qualifiers? Okay, I didn't need to see these. Where are we? There we go. All right, I'm I'm wasting so much time. Let's go over here. In the meantime, okay. one hand petting the dog. Uh the international regional qualifiers, July eighth. Okay, that's pretty soon. Open qualifiers are on the 3rd, which is in, what, three days? One, two, three. Three days until the open qualifiers start. And then on the 8th, which is literally next Monday, not tomorrow, Monday, the week after that Monday. That means that this patch is going to be a little baby patch, almost for sure. Because you do not want to change the game in a massive way right before four additional teams are decided for TI. So Ice Frog has to be a little careful here. And that's also why as soon as the finals nailed down um it was time to release the patch so keep that in mind with what we're going to go through in terms of modifications i don't imagine it's going to be massive um bat rider still pretty good here napalm cast range reduced to a scale based on levels which i think is perfectly fine and actually a really nice way to balance it because that means that if you are trying to prevent him from continuously stacking on you you can just walk walk away from him and you're going to have an extra 150 range at least spot when he's level one even like the level two one is not super long range or basically it's going to be harder for him to like chain stack on you i think it's all a very good thing uh blood seeker base armor increased by one and the rupture, rupture scepter has a uh, cooldown to its cast rather than zero because otherwise you have a higher chance of casting ruptures twice in a row instead of just one but the one armor should help a little bit um i don't think it's gonna make the most massive difference because keep in mind that oftentimes you are blood raged meaning that you're taking bonus damage. So one armor is, you could argue, 30% of that. 30% 30 of that is weaker than... Wait, you little cheater, is is not... You could think of it more like a 0.7 armor buff. Okay. You gonna lick my fingers too? Okay, thanks. All right, uh, Bounty Hunter base health regen increased. Um, Bounty has not been doing so well. I mean, there was that little period like a couple months ago where he was kind of effective as like an off lane or a carry hero, but that's kind of gone away big time. Um, sure, I can toss a little bit lower cooldown. Hypothetically, it'd be better for like casting, like buying ags on the hero and casting bouncing shurikens, but um, the base health regen will help as well. You'll be able to trade better, but he's not really that much of a do something here. He doesn't really do that much in the lane. In comparison to other heroes, like offlane heroes, or actually, actually good lane contesters, because he, he basically has to walk up to you just to trade, and people have kind of realized that it's really not a big deal. All you all you need to do is just trade with him, and you're almost always gonna out trade the guy. And it isn't until like he gets a bunch of Janata levels that his hero is actually kind of useful. So um, he kind of needs to be buffed. I'm sure that there'll be a moment where Bounty Hunter becomes obnoxious to play against, but it's gonna be a while until we get there. I think he's not gonna be there for a while. Um, Centaur double edge base damage reduced by thirty. And Stampede mana cost uh, now scales and increases, so he'll have more mana problems late game. Um, won't be able to do as many like Blink Stomp kind of stuff. Um, yeah, just a little baby nerf to Double Edge. It's really not that big of a nerf. By like the third skill point, it's pretty much the same, but 
Um, because centaurs go 114, this is certainly going to affect centaurs' ability to get a solo kill in the early parts of the game, um, which could matter. Um, Chen going to get nerfs too, because Chen has still been first banned. Hand of God, heal reduced. Oh god, they fucked the cooldown. <sighs> Hand of God, heal reduced uh, by 25. Sorry, uh, 50 and then 25 and Divine Favor active cooldown increase. So now there's even more reason to level this ability up. I'm kind of sad about this because uh, personally I never got very into like the teleporting heroes around aspect. I do know that it's very good, obviously, for setting up ganks and stuff like that because you're basically doing relocates. But um, uh, this means that you can't do it for your creeps as often is why I'm sad, personally. Because uh, the cooldown is going to be really, really high now. Um, I don't know exactly what skill build the pros have been going, but usually when I play it, I've only played it like once or twice since they reworked it this most recent time. Um, and I would go something like 4-4-1, four, four, uh, but I have a feeling that pro players are probably doing something different. I would imagine. Um, definitely more justified to get more four, four more points early, but at the very least it'll be harder for them to abuse this in the early game. It's really hard not to just like lightly scratch my dog while I'm while I'm streaming. Um strength gain on clinks increase. Is, is it getting buffed? What, what is happening? Is my mouse reversed? Strength gain on clinks has increased, but it hurt his agility gain reduced. And the uh, burning army spawn interval improved. So um I think this is reasonable because clinks is definitely having some like raw health problems right now. Um because he doesn't get health from his ultimate and they finally I guess decided like he already got a strength talent at 10. But this will make a little bit of a difference as well. Um, his uh, his his burning army skeletons are going to do less damage though, slightly because of the agility gain reduction. His main hero will be less damage dealing, but if they spawn faster, it's ultimately probably better for Clinks, I would imagine. Because if you get like one or two extra attacks off, it probably makes up for the agility re uh, decrease anyways. And Clinks has definitely been getting kind of popular right now with some of these like Dragon Lance eggs refresher builds kind of things where they just go very right click heavy um dark seer get nerfed too little five movement speed nerf base strength reduced by once one that's 20 health no big deal but will definitely hurt his ability to like go all in for trades i think this is probably fine because dark seer usually pairs with another really tanky melee hero and sometimes it feels a little bit too abusive like if you have a little bit of a weak lane it can be a little bit too hard to out trade them so i think a little bit of a strength reduction i think is actually good To nerf to pulling waves. You can't tell if they want bounty carry or shuriken bit uh, build. Um, I mean, they're definitely making the shuriken a lot better, and the eggs does exist, right? So there could be an easy justification for giving a bounty and eggs later on, if you get it from Roche, for example. Um, yeah, but I don't think anybody buys eggs on Bounty Hunter, and I think um, maybe Ice Frog a little bit over that one. This is probably not terrible, right? Because if you buy the Scepter, the range gets increased by 400. That's probably what this is, is like Ice Frog being like, guys, buy Scepter on Bounty. Like, you could pretty hype it, you could pretty reasonably rush it at a decent pace. Like, you don't have to get an aura item first. You could go something like Vlad's Phase Windlace into eggs. Because if you do get it, but it bounces twice or something. It does a lot of damage, 375, and it increases your cast range to 800. You could damn well cast this thing all the time. Eight second cooldown. You could cast Soul Ring. You could use a Soul Ring and throw two Shurikens. Not that it matters, because you're using all the mana the first time anyways, but you could throw a lot of Shurikens, man. Eight second cooldown if you get a bunch of tracks down. Can't Soul Ring while you're in Viz. It's one downside. But I don't know, I could see something like that. Yeah, I, I think we're. I think this this looks like one of those like ice frog push buffs. Like, please buy ags on the hero. That's what it looks like to me. Um, where were we? Dark Willow Bramble Maze cooldown reduced by five. That's getting pretty good. Twenty second cooldown on this baby. Um, also keep in mind her recent buff as well. She got a Bramble Maze cooldown talent. That means that this used to be twenty five. The the Bramble Maze cooldown talent is twelve. That means we could have an eight second Bramble Maze. And Brambles stay for 15 seconds. That's actually really awesome. That's a huge buff to the hero. It's going to make her more able to cast in the early game too. I guess the latch damage is pretty garbage leveled up. But the duration does go up. 
This is a pretty damn good one point skill right now. Like if you just have one point in Bramble Maze early on. That ain't bad. But yeah, eight second Bramble Maze. That feels pretty effective to me. Probably better, almost for sure better than the spell Lifesteal. Like guaranteed now. Now that it's only eight seconds, that's good. All right, now we're gonna jump over. Oh, I saw some Dazzle buffs. I just played Dazzle yesterday off stream. Dazzle is gonna get buffed, here it comes. Uh, cast range buff, uh, the 15 talents. I think that's reasonable. Um, that talent feels, I almost always get the cast range. Last night I played a game against a Venomancer and I went like, I didn't buy Midas, which was stupid. In hindsight, I definitely should have bought Midas, even though I was playing like five. Um, Cause you can, you can pay it off so fast. But I did go, I went the Shadow Wave heal and I bought a Greaves and then I got a um, Holy Locket for like the second time in my whole life. So it increased the heal amount of heal that I was getting. I think that 15 talent is probably the weakest one right now. Like they, the the, the more recent buffs was Dazzle got the experience gain talent at 10 instead of the health rate. Holy shit, that's 20 gifted subs. Thank you so much. Ale, a loss, a lock. That's awesome. Thank you. We're gonna hear some meat morphs for a bit. Congrats to the people. So Dazzle got a, tw uh, a, a 30 exp uh, the experience gain talent, right? And when I was playing it the other night, I did get the experience talent um, when I played him, but I was kind of sitting around like, really, if you look at what the experience talent does, it does max out your skills faster, which is kind of nice because, you know, getting Grave on a low cooldown is cool, and um, getting your ultimate to a higher level is also really nice because it's going to lower the cooldown of your abilities. But I didn't really feel like the talents were that incredible. Even like the the forty percent poison touch slow one can be really nice. Um, I think the movement speed, even the poison touch DPS in the right games, can be really good too. But the the fifteen one definitely felt a little bit mediocre. One twenty five cast range is good, but not incredible. And twenty shadow wave heal damage is like pretty good, but not incredible. Uh, so I, I think it's pretty nice that they buff these two. I think these are nice little little benefits to the hero. The cast range is really good. Not two hundred cast range is kind of bonkers. Um, I definitely want to poke around with Dazzle a little more. I think I want to try to make him work as like an offlane 4 or a 3 position hero. I think he could be good there because he can farm quite fast um, even without Midas. I think obviously you should buy Midas because of the cooldown reduction. But I think he's a pretty damn good 3-4 I would imagine. Because he's got that good position between like being like a supporty 3-4. Because if you play him as like a core and you go Midas and stuff, it's harder to transition your hero into like a ganking sort of hero, but I think he functions well as like a mech builder carrier kind of hero. Because that's already what a skill set does anyways, right? So it's kind of still playing along those lines. So I, th I think there's some potential in him being a good 3-4 right now. Um, Necronomicon is obviously pretty good. Yeah, for like pushing, you can reset poison touch slow. That's probably the best thing about it, but I'm not sure. I don't know. I, don't, I haven't played. I barely touched the, um, the Necro. I don't think I've ever even gone Midas Necro. I gotta play him more, um, but I, I don't know. I, I'm not the biggest fan with how people have been playing him. I, I think it doesn't, it fits the buffs that he got, but I don't think it fits the hero's play style very, in a way that I like at least. So I'm fine with these. Um, attack range increase for 25 uh, for Disruptor, very small buff, but kind of nice. Um, played a Disruptor game recently, fed my balls off, didn't go well. Don't think this would have helped my game. <laughs> it's, I was still gonna lose. Uh, draw Ranger Marksmanship bonus damage now treated as regular single instance of damage that can be crit. And the bonus damage is increased by level. So. This skill just got so fucking complicated. So it doesn't one-shot ancients anymore but it does one-shot neutrals against heroes it does bonus damage but it only pierces the base armor not the total armor and now it's also treated as a single instance of damage which i assume means that if you proc marksman against a ta that it will break two sh two armor or two refraction charges instead of just one and because it's separated now Let's just level up to max. Hero. Oop. Silent is missed. No, I'm wrong. It doesn't. So be it. 
does not still counts as one but but it does mean that that aspect of the damage can be can be um critical striked pretty much um death and silence they used to count as two it probably still pierces evasion yeah but it is getting complicated. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm slow. We're still up in D. Uh, it was two before, now it's one. Okay. That's probably why it says single instance. Because when, it, when I read single, it made me think that it, it's separate from the attack. But it, it must have been um, different before. But now it can be crit because it's built into your regular attack. So buying a Daedalus Sundra is probably even better now. Because if you do get the proc, you get a huge damage increase of 120 to 140. So Daedalus draw is probably really good now, I would guess. You used to be able to go um, like Ag's lifesteal crit on her. But I think that was before all of this marksmanship stuff. But it's probably really good now. Because you get lifesteal based on the proc that you do. And they bounce and stuff and get bonus damage. Uh, I don't know if that's viable or not. But it's definitely going to be better. If it wasn't okay, now wish. Um, Ember Spirit Ag Scepter now reduces mana cost to twenty five instead of zero. I think that's definitely a good thing. It's not a huge cost, but it's enough that like if they do mana drain you fully, that you're prevented from escaping for free, which is fair. It's not a big cost, but it's there. It's like the Sunder Change basically at a little bit of a cost. That way, it's not a huge pain in the ass to kill the person. It's uh, like still allow the mana drain tool to exist, but just make it hard that they'd have to get you really low for it to work. And if you don't have a magic wand as Ember to like wand and jump away, then you just kind of deserve to die. Searing Chain's total damage reduced. Uh, probably needed to happen. That skill was pretty value. It's kind of just always good, to be honest, but um, still very good skill. Uh, but it won't be quite as useful at low skill points as it was before. Maybe at level 1. Level 25 talent changed. Uh, just a, a nerf to the Remnant Charge Restore time. Which is probably fair because of Ags. So... What is the actual Remnant Restore Time? 38? So before it was a um, 13 second respawn time, now it's 18. So basically if you buy Ags, it's going to be easier to run out of um, charges than before. Which I think is completely reasonable. Chantra's base armor increased by 1. Nature Sentence heal per wisp increased from 10 to scaling. So now actually leveling up heals you even more. So... It is time for a spreadsheet. You guys want to see some some spreadsheet math? Isn't it beautiful? Welcome. This is open office because I'm too cheap to buy the real stuff. Um, 10 per second uh, with four. And then I'm just thinking about how to frame this. 11 for 6, 12 for 8, and 13 for 10. Equals, do, boop, boop, boop. And you click here and you do this. This copies the code. And there we have numbers. Is that correct? I'm wrong. It, there's also, we need a uh, the duration. It's 10 per second times 4 times the duration, which is 11. Meep, meep. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Times this times this. Okay, now we drag it over. So, uh, whereas before... this and go okay so there's our difference it's actually a pretty huge difference in the late game um, once you get four points you're getting a lot more heal 330 more health than you were pre previously because the difference now is the heal per wisp is increased so uh, yeah not bad 
could definitely more justify maxing the skill out earlier. Mana cost goes down, heal goes up. I mean, what, what are her numbers like with her talents now? Nobody ever gets the talents. Plus eight wisps. This is kind of poorly placed for this. Now I've got to move it over here and do the same for myself. Can I do a slow fucking in the window? Okay, I can. Um, plus eight wisps and plus 25 heal. So let's redo these with eight wisps. Wisps, uh, okay. So basically we're doing this and here and then plus eight wisps. That's gonna be 12, 16 mental math. No shit, I fucked up. Was that a six? Six, six plus eight, 14, 16, 18, okay. Got that right. All right, so here's your heal numbers if you get the eight wisp talent, which is a buttload of heal. And then if you get the uh, plus 25 heal, that means the amount that they heal per second, that'd be, let's uh, just copy this again, put it down here, and then we go 35, 36, 37, 38. I mean, that's kind of busted. That's a lot of heal. This is the uh, 15 talent. This is the 25 talent. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. Oops. Typing. Um, I don't know, man. The other one is 8% impetus damage, which is really hard to pass up. The untouchable slow, I'm sorry, the 50 damage also pretty hard to pass up. But damn, dude, that is a bonkers amount of heal. This is like where you buy Holy Locket and you're like, yeah, I'm going to increase that by 25%. Which is a difference of 1800 health for a duration of 11 seconds. I don't know, man. That looks wrong to you. Is it? Yeah, I know it's 15 plus 25 talent, but um, I'm just, fuck it. That's a buttload of heal. Like, when I played Dazzle the other night, I had a whole game where I healed 30k. I could cast, like, Nature's Attendance, like, five times and hit that. Yeah, I, I'm aware that heal is split among multiple units, but 7,524 heal over a duration of... 11 seconds? Okay, let's split that seven ways. Let's split it 10 ways. You're healing everybody for 752. That's like two and a half times what a mech would do. If you split it 10 ways. That's bonkers. It is so much heal, actually. There are definitely situations where this is actually amazing. Like against Venomancers and stuff like that. How much would he heal a spirit vessel? That's a gr another great way to talk about how ridiculously potentially good this is. Uh, what is it set to? 60% right now? Yeah. All right. So if you heal through spirit vessel, can you still see this now? Here. We'll multiply this by 0.4 because that would be the 40% remaining that spirit vessel does not prevent. It still gives you 3,000 fucking health. <laughs> It's fucking crazy. Through Spirit Vessel, 3,000 health. That is level 25 by all means. So it's not like you're going to have that the whole game. There's going to be a period of the game where you're running around with a 15 talent healing for 2574 and feeling real bad because you're like, oh, dude, it's actually really undercutting my health. Uh, let's do D14. Uh, Oops. Then you're only getting 1,000 health out of it, 29, which is not nearly as good. But... Um, the healing per second is uh, this number divided by 11 or something. Yeah. So it's probably, it's it's about 752-ish. It's 752-ish. A little bit higher. D22 times 0.4. This is with the spirit, the with the, uh, assuming you have Holy Locket, it would be this. Interesting. DD22. Yeah, it'd just be 25% higher. And if you also buy a heart, guys, is that health regen? It's all healing, right? All right, what if you have a heart and a holy locket? How much can you heal yourself for? That's the next question. This is with holy locket. How do these work, though, together? I'm going to assume that they work separately. 
We'll just assume the math is separately. Let's delete this, delete this. Okay, we'll do um, times 0 0.25 equals this times 0 0.5. I mean, really, realistically, we could just do. So if you have heart and a holy locket, you could heal yourself for 13,000 health in 11 seconds. Spell does not affect healing. Can I say wisps five times fast? No, I can't. It's impossible. All right, we've had enough fun with our spreadsheets. Goodbye, spreadsheet. You were good to me. Meep, meep. Thank you for the sub. Green wish meepo time. Okay. Uh, this is Ice Frog saying, hey, guys, get nature's attendance. Get it. Get the talents. Please, somebody buy, somebody buy the talents. Heal your team. Stop trying to DPS. Buy, heal your team. Um, Enigma black hole mana cost increased. A little bit costly makes the numbers prettier though, which is kind of nice. Uh, level 20 talent reduced the Eidolon damage and the demonic conversion Eidolons is reduced by a little bit too. It's honestly not even that bad um, of a big of a nerf to the hero. It's kind of reasonable, honestly. It was like so many Eidolons and they did so much damage. I think it's it's fine. Little nerfs to the hero, still viable. Soulbind slow reduced to 10% on all levels. Get screwed, Grimstroke players. 30% was kind of extreme. Because, I mean, it restricts your movement as well, you know. And it would just go through BKB. You just cast it on some BKB here and they're super slowed. 30% is pretty damn good for a BKB piercing slow for 8 seconds. That could also latch you to somebody else that prevents you from moving. So I think it being a 10% slow is super reasonable. Boy, man, think how, fall, how far uh, Grimstroke has fallen, though, for real, since he came into the game so far. Inner fire damage increased is a, a, a good thing for ability draft players. That's actually a really legitimate ability. This is a really, really good spell, honestly. 11 second cooldown, 4 second AoE disarm for 310 damage. That's great. Really good ability. Um, I don't know if it'll make Huskar that much more playable, but I have barely touched or seen Huskar played recently. Um, seen him in some pubs. Uh, 15 talent increase from Cold Snap uh, down to minus 15 and Alacrity, basically buffing the two talents that nobody gets often. That would put our Cold Snap at... How the hell do I check this? In here. Do I have to go in-game? Is that the only way? I'll keep it in mind. Um... So, at its, oh, it's at 20 seconds, okay. That'd be a 5 second cooldown on Cold Snap, instead of a 8 second cooldown, which is really good. The duration is 6.5 seconds at max level. That's really good. You can basically, you can perma Cold Snap somebody very easily. If you get an Octarine, it's going to be reduced to like 3.75 second cooldown. You can just constantly Cold Snap. You're like breaking every TP. I kind of like that. Um, definitely could make some kind of combat invoker more viable. Because Cold Snap definitely helps you. Um, like if you if you did go some kind of like Quasso X build, and you got the 15 Cold Cold Snap cooldown talent. Not saying that that one's not necessarily going to be better anyways than the extra Forge Spirit because any Invoker would be casting Cold Snap all the time. But if you if you're casting a lot of Cold Snaps and you have a high level of Quas, I could see this being more justified. The more Quas you have, the more often you can mini stun somebody. The more damage it does per freeze. Up to 56 per freeze, and the duration lasts for up to 6.5 seconds. I could genuinely see this talent becoming. I don't know, maybe Quasfux maybe Invoker is going to become viable. <sighs> Who knows? I should try it out again. Try to make it work. I haven't done it in years, though. I used to play Quasfux Invoker. Probably in like 2013 or something. But since then, I, I have barely touched the hero. Um, IO level 20 talent change. This is what everybody was complaining about? This? That's it? Is there more? I saw tweets saying like, oh, I was destroyed now. I was broke. That's it? Like, by all means. That talent was great. The talent was really good. But is he dead? No. He's not dead. You just go do Roche, guys. It's so easy. <laughs> it's so simple. <laughs> what? Is that really? Is that really everything? Why? Is that? That's all people are mad about? 15 armor? That's so sick. That's definitely a situational talent grab. 15 armor is so good. 
You can go health regen at 15, 15 armor at 20. You still get your fun talent. He's got already, he's already got a super fun talent at 25, guys. What are you complaining about? Fifteen armor against some like PAs or something, dude. Hell yeah, I'm grabbing that. All right, uh, keeper of the light, chakra magic cooldown reduction is increased by one second, seven seconds now. It's pretty good. Can you reduce the cooldown yourself? I don't remember. Seven seconds is pretty good. Uh, probably some more abilities. It works really works really well with Ember Spirit. Um, I don't know if there's other heroes. You could double cold snap, dude. I mean, you can also just spam it on on somebody to lower the cooldown of their ultimates too. Radiance cold snap and invoker coming. Uh yeah. Nerf gyro more than wisp, but that but that's the thing, right? Like, gyro needs to be his own beautiful flower, but he can't be because he's been tethered to Io for years. Because he's such a good combo with Io, they make they make so much sense with each other. So like removing a free Ags upgrade, that's fine. Let them let them become separated heroes, you know. All right, um, Chakra Magic. You move this. Is this real? Why does it say 25 to... Oh, okay, the speed that enemies walk. Okay. I was real confused. This would be, you know... Oops. Let's give this man some tranquil boots. So, there's still it's still really slow, but it just means that there's a, a slightly higher chance that you're not going to be able to make it out before it catches you and pulls you back in. That's all. That's all it means. So it'll it'll just be slightly easier to keep keep people on the inside. That's all. They're just basically buffing Coddle because the the nerf to refresher was a little bit too strong for him. Um, Lich Sinister Gaze cooldown is being reduced by three seconds. That's fine. Level 20 cast range, talent increased, and the frost shield duration also buffed. I think those are pretty good. Um, last for six seconds could be pushed up to nine. That's pretty long. Nine on a 15 second cooldown? It's really good, actually. It's like damn near close to permanent. If you get an octarine, that's probably like what? Nine out of 12 seconds or something? I think that's right. Three, six, nine, 12. No, it's wrong. It's more than that. Probably like it's probably like three point seven five or something. Fifteen times point two five. Okay, I guessed right. Three point seven five. So that would put you at an eleven point two five second cooldown with a nine second uptime if you have an octarine or something like that. Um, which is not bad. Tuner cast range is really good though. Cast range is ball around lich. Because now you don't have to get as close to cast Frost Blast to cast Sinister Gaze. Like 200 cast range, that'd, that'd put you... Like you could genuinely buy Aether Lens on this hero now, I dare say. Chain Frost is a little slow, and so that's kind of a negative. It would take time for Chain Frost to get there and start bouncing, but... I mean, 200 cast range and an Aether Lens? Like, let's check this shit out, dude. Getting to Lich, uh, 25 is impossible. I mean, not necessarily. You go cast range and Aether already? I mean, it's definitely better now. What was it before? 125 or 150? It was 150. I, I would usually get it over the Frost Shield duration myself. Although the Frost Shield duration plus the HP regen at 25, those two pair so good together. And that's usually the one that I want to use. But 60% movement attack speed slow is also disgustingly good. Um, anyways, let's uh, level up to max. Check out the cast range on this baby. I actually like this talent, although 120 damage is a buttload. It is a buttload, guys. And then we'll go like this, and then later on, you know, I didn't need to roleplay uh, buying an Aether Lens or anything, but look at this shit. Good luck getting away, scrub. Oops. 
and then I'm like, ugh! Good luck. Good luck, dude. <laughs> this is actually fucking incredible. Yo, I gotta say, I am a big fan. Look at this. Look how far I have to walk into attack. I'm like, I'm gonna mess you up, dude. Uh, this is 550. This is actually so long. This is like pretty damn long. But now I'm just spoiled. Because I'm like, uh, let's go see what's going on. Oh shit, Axe is warding. Look at this shit. Look how far away this is. This is insane. Yeah, I genuinely need a Dragon Lance to make use of my passive. Look at that. It doesn't even feel worth it anymore. It's like, why would I why would I ever go that close to attack him one time when I could just stand back here and cast him and have like a permafrost blast slow? Why would I even bother? The bounce range? I mean it's always it's I don't I don't think it increases. I don't think that part increases. Cause that would that would definitely bounce. If it says six hundred here, it should be eight hundred if it or something if it increases with eight lines, but it doesn't. It doesn't work like that. Stop! Look at that slow. It's so good. Look at that slow. How long does that last for? One, two. Is that a four second slow? Oh wait, I'm still attacking book. <laughs> it's like it's like three to four seconds. Makes her worth on Lich. I mean, I, I already thought that the cast range was good, but I, I definitely think this could help make Lich a much better hero for sitting far back. Especially because cast range is great with armor. Like, cast range effectively is a blink dagger, or a force staff, or movement speed. You should think of it as the same kind of thing. Because it keeps you out of danger of your enemies, and allows you to be in position at all times. Because if your allies get gone on, you need to armor them. Oh, I'm within range. That's that's what, how you should think of cast range. That's why I think the cast range talent is really good. Getting to 20 is super reasonable. Getting to 25, maybe not, but... I don't know. I think Aether Lens sounds really good on Lich. I gotta, I gotta do that. Go, go, Aether Lens. The only downside is you can't hit 20 quickly because you don't have an experienced talent. So that's hard to get. But, I mean, you could go like movement speed, damage, cast range, or Frost Blast, cast range. Frost Blast cooldown looks a lot better too with Aether Lens. Just sit farther back, basically. Okay. Luna. Someday, Valve will watch my streams and fix this bug. Uh, level 10 ca talent increased from 5 baby attack speed. Okay. Uh, cast range talent going up. So basically just raw buffs to Luna. And then lifesteal for the 25 talent. Okay. Uh, slightly surprising. But I guess we haven't really seen her in a while. And she doesn't lean very well at all. 400 cast range is kind of incredible. By the way. Man, she is like the ability draft hero now. I dare say. 400 cast range is bonkers good. It's actually so good. Okay. Mars, uh, 15 talent slightly reduced. Mars has been picked a decent amount at the tournament, so it makes sense. Uh, leap charge replenish time reduced. So better to have level 1 leap and star storm scepter reduced by 1 second. So nobody buys scepter on Murana anymore. Murana hasn't really been a core in quite a while now. It's been... It has been some time. Um, I kind of miss the days of the Marana Ags. It was cool, but um, yeah, it's very. It's been gone for a while. It's just better to go right click stuff because leap attack speed got buffed so much. Is why nobody does Ags anymore. It's just not worth it, as your sense as your uh, source of damage. More attribute shift, bonus agility, and strength rescaled. I think this is pretty fine. Um, this is actually a pretty big nerf. It's just a laning nerf, obviously. Um, and it doesn't really mean much by the third point, but for level one, you have three less damage now. Actually, it's a lot worse than that, you could argue. You have three less agility, you have three less damage, and you have three less strength, guaranteed. So that means that if you want comparable damage to before, you're way less. That means, okay, so so let's say you're comfortable with 600 health on Morphling normally to start the lane. If you want the exact same damage that you would have in that moment, you would need to have, you would need to shift three more strength to agility which is even worse because that means you have three less strength from this new agility shift to 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 keep the same amount of damage, and you have three less strength from having three less from the bonus. So you have six less strength now to have the same damage as before, and that translates to 120 health. It's a shitload. So this is actually a pretty big nerf to the, to level one morphling. You're going to be way easier to be bullied, which is good. 600 to 480. Yep. That's a that's a pretty big lane nerf. I think that's a good way to nerf the hero. Make him a little bit worse. Make him like moderately worse 
level ones level two and then make them a little bit worse level three and a tiny bit worse level five i think this is fine uh good good nerfs to the hero ogre buffs Ooh. uh item multicast buffer range increase okay that's really good and bloodlust multicast radius increased and uh, multicast interval so this is also a big buff um like think of it this way um if you cast an item on an enemy the buffer range is probably who else will be hit with the item basically so let's say you have two heroes standing 300 units away from each other if you would cast dagon on this guy it wouldn't catch this guy because the buffer range is too long too far that's my guess about what buffer range means now that it's 600 if you cast it on this guy in the middle it could catch anything unit or hero within 600 range of the guy you target so this is going to make buying items offensive items on ogre magi much more useful um I am not sold on him being a hero just yet, uh, support wise. But I think it's getting close. I played him, I played him in a game the other day, and I did really, really well. I might have been like a really one-sided MMR game, or I might have been playing with lower level allies. I don't know, but I kind of owned. I tried to get side the vice rushed, kind of, but it didn't work out. And maybe I should still buy Midas as like a mid-game item on the hero. Might be worth doing. Just because you are, you do have a seventy-five percent chance to multicast it, so you would. Uh, basically gain it back you gain back the money a lot faster especially like i could definitely see buying like a, a midas as like a late game item like when you're level 12 or something buy midas then maybe because you can pay for the damn thing so quick even though it's 160 gold if you get a multicast you're getting 320 right and the gold item costs like what 2050 right now or something like that i think it's 2050 If you divide that baby by 320, that's incorrect. I see what I did wrong. Um, 15%, 15.6% to do a double Midas. Which is, so you basically need about 6.4 of those to get your Midas paid off. It also gives you levels, which isn't bad, I guess. But I'm trying to think of a way to like accelerate faster into an item, like because there's just not a lot of items that are good to double. It's the same. It's the same thing for Grimstroke, right? Grimstroke is like uh, there's items that double. It's like Yules, Atos, Dagon, kind of. But like most of them just don't feel good. You it literally has to be Side the Vice. Side the Vice is like by far the best item to double. That actually like gives a really good game impact. But the problem is this item is really difficult to build. It takes forever. If you grab like either of these things, it's like they just sit in your inventory and they don't do that much. The buildup is so rough. And there's periods of time where I'm playing Ogre 4 or something or Ogre 5 and I'm like, I've got 3,000 gold. I'm doing really good. I want to get a scythe. And then it just takes like another 15 minutes and it feels awful. And I feel like getting a, slipping a Midas in there some, somewhere is going to make a huge difference. Is kind of my impression. But the item itself, the 40 attack speed is pretty garbage and not really worth getting is the next issue. But I don't know. Um, I think Ogre is getting to a place where he's going to be a core, probably, is what this is kind of screaming to me, to be honest. Like maybe Ogre mid, people are, which is exciting because that, that's I, I'm excited to see him played in that way um, or for people to figure it out. Between like phase boots being really good again on him and these little buffs to damage. 15 town is a little bit better. I could definitely see Ogre is approaching a period where um, where he can definitely abuse some of those items. And it's also very cool because he's kind of like Dazzle in a way where he can abuse those items really well. Basically, basically he has he has an ultimate that allows him to abuse items, but it's in a completely different way as Dazzle, even though it's kind of similar. Dazzle can just farm really fast and have low cooldowns. Ogre can multicast it. I think that's really awesome. Uh... Ogre Midas is the one issue you disagree with me uh, disagree with me on. It's too good to skip. Um, it's good. I just don't think you should rush it is all. I feel like rushing is a little bit dangerous. It's not as bad now because the multicast chance at level 1 is better. It's 75 instead of being like, what, 60 before or something. But um, it's what, 3 out of 4 times you'll get a double. But I just don't think you should rush it because the, the point of the hero is to lane dominate, you know? And if you spend your first like 2,000 gold squeaking out of Midas, you're in a bad place. So, like you need to get like Arcane Boots. Maybe wand first as well. And ideally with maybe like a stout shield and orb of venom. And then maybe buy Midas afterwards. Yeah, definitely agree. Like a, a later, like a mid-game Midas on Ogre is probably really reasonable. 
But in the same vein, like that could be a glimmer cape or a force staff or a blink dagger. Like those items are so fucking good for for making ogre effective, honestly. Because you can just jump in and blow some guy up or react. Like it's it's really hard. I mean you're getting extra benefit from your ulti, but I don't know. I'll have to I'll have to play him a little bit more. I think you could definitely justify some core ogre. I bet you could play him mid. It's getting it's getting very close to that mark. Or play, doing something like playing in mid is probably super reasonable. Um, okay, um, Oracle's fortune and mana cost increased. Oracle's still a little bit too good. 100 mana is pretty fair. Because this ability is very spammable. Uh, 120 damage. You can use it to dispel things, which is excellent. It roots. Roots are really good right now. Um, making 100 mana is fine. It's going to make Oracle have some mana problems. Like pre-Arcane Boots. But it's probably pretty fair right now. The item is, uh, the skills are just a little bit too good. Um, and other supports are having trouble being as effective, I think, in some ways. Uh, PA getting some buffs. H health talent buff up to 200. That's not bad. It's looking more appealing. Blur Evasion. That one's actually really good, by the way. That's an amazing talent. And, um, minus four armor corruption is the other one. And then level 25 talent is Kudura up to 10%. So these are pretty big buffs to PA, actually. So the reason the Blur Talent is godly, actually, is because it's plus 25% Blur Evasion. The way you got to think about Evasion is that you got to think about what what percentage is that right now and then think about what Evasion it's going to be afterwards. So when you're level 20, obviously, you have level 4 Blur. That's a 50% Evasion. If you're getting 25% or more Evasion, that means that if somebody doesn't have True Strike, that means that they're going from a 50% chance to hit you to a 25% chance to hit you. So that's a 50% decrease. So... That talent essentially could be worded as something like 50% mischance or evasion. Like you could literally word it as 50% evasion is what that talent could be, which is ridiculously good. If somebody, if you're like ahead on PA and like you're against like right click carries and they don't have like MKB, if they just have like Maelstrom or something, that talent's actually really good to get because then you'd be 75% evasion and then against their 25% accuracy. Oops, wrong buttons. It's uh. Times 0.25 of the time they're going to hit you, right? How do you do the math? Just by 0.75? 75% of the time they're going to miss. But of that 75%, 25% of the time, so it's, it's probably 0.75 times 0.25. Is that correct? I can't remember. I'm, I'm, my math, my math brain is not working right now. Um, it doesn't double your evasion, but it's you know it's very good. Double is not technically correct, but it's good. I'm not going to demo mode it, and then you'd have to count the amount of times. Seventy-five percent of the time you're going to miss, and of those seventy-five percent of the times, um, twenty-five percent are auto hits because of maelstrom so i'll do 75 times 25 so that's 18.75 so you can probably subtract that by 0.75 um just have to remember the number 0.75 minus 0.1875 so basically if you have an mkb and you get that talent if, if your opponent has a maelstrom or a mjolnir but not an mkb and you grab that talent, your evasion is actually 56.25% instead of 75, which is still pretty good. Still pretty damn good. Whereas in the other case, it would be 0 0.125. 37.5. So if somebody has a Maelstrom and you have four points in blur, your evasion is really against them is really 37.5%. But if you get um, the 25% blur evasion talent, then it's more like 50. Was it 54? Something like that. I think there's definitely going to be a time where a smart player could definitely get that talent. It's it's hard to pass up minus four armor though, uh, because minus four armor is a massive damage increase for your hero. But I think there could be games where you could hypothetically close things out or get a really big advantage against them. With it, either way, it's still like an eight percent evasion advantage against heroes if they have an MKB. It's not completely useless. Um, the ten percent coup de gras is ridiculously good actually, because your passive has a chance of 15% to proc base right now. So if you up that to 25, it's a massive damage increase. 
It's actually so much. It's spreadsheet time, baby. Let's do it. And okay, so oops, that's my face. Uh, two hundred. Oops, three twenty-five was it? Yeah, and four fifty. That's fifteen. Oops. And if we do the same. We can get the percentage damage increase, basically. So level one PA crit is a 30% damage increase on average. Level two is 48.75. Level three is 67.5. Oops, I don't need to do this. So that's a, that's a pretty big pretty big increase um wow that's actually huge that is such a big damage increase it's insane um 20 percent damage increase obviously you want to have it at level 25 pretty much you're just looking at this number but you're increasing your damage by 67 that's like 50 or something 45 you're getting a 45 percent damage increase of that talent it's actually fucking bonkers 45 percent damage increase on average you won't get a triple stifling dagger, of course, so you're not going to be able to push creep waves as fast, and you're not going to be able to, like, potentially crit multiple heroes. But a 45% damage increase, I'm doing it wrong. Uh, I guess I need to subtract by 100%. Is that what you're thinking? Because your crit damage, when it crits, yeah, I think I'm doing it wrong. Because this is supposed to be 100. Like, you, you have to minus 100. Because it's it's critting up to 450%. But how much extra damage are you getting is the answer. Am I wrong? Because it's all about how much extra... Like, the old jug crit was... It was, like, 20% chance to crit for double damage. So you would say you would multiply the percentage by the extra damage increase, which is an extra hundred. So this is uh, you're you're right. I was doing it wrong. It should be like this. So it's not as big of a jump, but it's still good. Okay. Thanks for the thanks for the heads up. Was that you right? Yeah. Thank you, crippling depression. Thanks for uh, correcting that. So still a pretty big increase, thirty five percent, but not stupid stupid bonkers. Fifteen percent, thirty three seven five fifty two. But a 35% damage increase is pretty big, considering the previous number was 52.5. So, certainly not bad to get. Okay, let me... Let's turn this off briefly, in case we need to spreadsheet again, since spreadsheeting has felt good today. Um, definitely a super possibility to get that talent, though. Like... The, just the thought of increasing your damage by that much per hit is bonkers when you're hitting for like 300 against supports and stuff. It's like an extra 100 damage, basically. Gives you a much better chance with your basher to get kills. Like, I could easily see a lot of players start grabbing that. In, in, in fact, one thing I want to check really quick is what the win rates are for Phantom Assassin. Wait, I want to go Heroes, Phantom Assassin, Trends much higher win rate uh, this is obviously old data this is the five percent coup de gras increase but the triple stifling dagger is a much higher win rate same with the blur thing although the, these numbers obviously aren't always going to be accurate because it's almost always going to show like oh p if people are winning they're usually going to get more damage if they're losing they're usually going to get more defense to try to stay alive so obviously the numbers are skewed, but I don't know. 10% coup de gras looks pretty good to me. Makes sense that the um, lifesteal is a higher win rate over the cleave, in my opinion. Like, the cleave is definitely nice, and I've seen pro players get the cleave before. But 15% um, lifesteal for an item, when you do this much damage and you crit that hard, I think it's probably worth having. 
Um, Phantom Lens or Juxtapose Illusion Damage increased by 2%. That's actually getting pretty respectful. 20% Illusion Damage is not bad. It's going to make uh, PL less bad against Crimson Guard by a little bit. I mean, let's say you're hitting for like, I don't know, 200 base damage late game. Your Illusions are hitting for 40. It's still not going to go through Crimson, I guess. So that part's probably irrelevant, but... I mean, it's a 2 out of 18 damage increase. That's a 1 out of 9. Thank you, Fractions. Uh, that's an 11% damage increase. That's pretty big. That's a pretty big damage increase for your Illusions. Although, again, um, a lot of the damage that your Illusions are doing is actually based on Diffusal Blade. Which is doing 16 damage per attack base. So, if you're hitting for 200, then your Illusions are doing 40 now. Instead of 36. And with the fusel added in it's i mean it's not that big it's a four damage increase late game right but these kind of things will matter you'll farm a little faster that kind of thing you'll kill ancients easier it'll matter and it's at all levels actually so it'll, it'll still be there crit damage yeah that's a good point um it'll it'll help with crit damage too but i just don't see people skipping doppelganger like peels peels a hero where like your whole purpose is to be obnoxious and be able to jump around and like swarm people and stuff like that like, the crit strike talent is definitely not bad, but look at these win rate differences. It's actually fucking insane. 27.4% difference. It's just a little bit too straightforward how to build this hero, in my opinion, which is a little bit unfortunate. But the doppelganger talent's way too good. It's a fucking dispel. Slows, dusts, so many things just removed on a four second cooldown. So many things dispelled. If this stops having a dispel, by all means, this talent's going to be way worse. But Peel needs buffs right now, so we won't see that. We'll just see small damage increases. I, there's just almost no way the crit talent is ever going to be better. Most likely. Unless you go like the ganking invis build with like Shadow Blade and stuff. Which maybe we could see more of, who knows. Uh, Flesh Heap health regen increased. Another buff to Pudge, okay. So a little surprise. I know people have been poking around with him a little bit in pro games, but it hasn't become like super solidified. Um, this talent definitely needed a buff, the Rot Slow one. It was pretty shit, actually. I've tried it a little, but I never felt good. The Lifesteal, the Spell Lifesteal one is just so good. Because your Rot damage against heroes is going to heal you back. Your Dismember ulti is going to heal you even more than it did before. The Rot Slow one is just garbage. So it's 20% now instead of, what was it, 16, 18? 16? So now we're looking at 52% um, slow instead of 48. It's a 4% slow increase if you get it. It's not bad. 52 is a lot. It's a lot of slow amount. Um, and it does have a win rate advantage, apparently. Not too surprised to see these about That's equal, personally. Something. Cooldown is probably like a game is closing out. I'm going to pick this talent kind of a thing. I've certainly been there before. Flesh Heap stack. This 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 um data is probably really biased. If this was controlled for amount of flesh heap stacks, we'd have a much better number. But people are gonna grab this when they have lots of flesh heaps, more likely, which means that they're probably already doing pretty well. So this win rate is kind of irrelevant, um, as this one probably is too. But this is a little surprising. Um, I mean, against the right heroes, rot slows can be really good. Go some like raid boss stuff. But it's definitely more of like a chase people down kind of a thing. I don't know. <laughs> Every game that I've ever gotten the Rot slow, slow Talent, I felt real bad. I felt like super wrong about it. But um, against the right heroes, it could be good. I'm just not really sure what those heroes are yet. It's probably, it'd have to be like melee cores that can't get away very easily. Something like that. Pudge Pugna, Life Drain, Damage Increased. A little buff for the mid level. Actually, actually uh, late game one too. 25 extra damage per level, you level up. A little surprised about this. I mean, most Pugnas don't go Veil Aether Lens anymore. They just go like Aether Lens for the range, which you do need. Um, but a 50, 50 damage increase is pretty big. It's one sixth. That's pretty good. One divided by six. Is that like 16% damage increase late game? It's pretty good. But it's really easy to get magic resistance late game, so I think this is pretty justified. Although a, da a raw damage increase like this is massive, because it means that the spell amp that you get on Pugna is going to be massively increased. You know, getting like a Kaya, what is it, 8% spell amp? 
This gives you 28 damage instead of 24. It matters because those are the numbers like the pre um pre resistant numbers are the ones that get affected the most by negative resistance. And Pugna has decrep, and you can buy a veil on the hero. So for for late game scenarios, if you can get to 18 really fast on Pugna, this could absolutely make a huge difference. Get you a couple more kills than it would before. It also means that you could heal your allies faster too, which is kind of cool. All right, uh, race uh, Ricky base health regen reduced from three to one. So now he's got normal regen, which means they're probably going to do buffs in comp uh, in uh, in exchange, I guess. Cloak and fagger. Uh, I did not mean to say that. Cloak and dagger fade delay. There we go. Uh, from down to six seconds. Six five four three. Uh, cloak and dagger provides two, three, four, five HP. Okay, so they put the regen into cloak and dagger. Cloak and dagger. Cloak and dagger. Fade delay. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, cloak and dagger fade delay. Um, so it is better at level one and it gives regen. This is kind of a cool way to do it, I think. Um, it's not uncommon for people to level this up first anyways. But I kind of like that it scales better into the mid game. Because this two extra regen here is nice. Especially, it's really good for the laning stage by all means. But it doesn't mean that you have to... But it, but it, like Ricky has this problem between like the laning stage and like the mid game. Where you kind of want to rush like Wraith Bands and Treads or Phase Boots or something. And then get a Diffusal Blade. So you have this like regen problem. He's actually got a solution at level 10. It's 6 health regen. But now there's no way in hell I'm getting that talent probably. Although maybe I do want it. 6 health regen there. 5 health regen from Cloak and Dagger plus my base. I'm probably running around at like 14, 15 health per second, which is kind of cool. Could make you roam more if you really want to. But with 5 HP regen being here, I feel like there's no way I don't go 8 agility and just try to do more damage or something. But um, this talent is actually so fucking good. I love this talent. If I ever get Ricky in ability draft, I pick smoke screen every fucking game, guaranteed. Because this puts your smoke screen at a discuss a three second cooldown now. Like that, clo that talent is so good. Genuinely, it is so good. Look, it is li it's equal win rate to the critical strike, which you would think is just like way better, right? You would assume it's way better. But it is not. It is at lower MMRs because people don't know how to use their spell correctly, but like look, it's people are majority grabbing it. They're grabbing the smoke screen cooldown. Because you can just put smoke screens everywhere. People can't see. Slows movement by 20%. 70% miss rate. Can't cast spells. Talent is ridiculously good. Big fan. Um, and if I'm playing Ricky and I'm not trying to do some like super hard carry thing, which is probably how most Ricky should play, um, then I think they get that talent almost every time, personally. Uh, Slaughter, Aghanim, Scepter, Regen, Bonus, Increased by 10. I think this is probably fine. Um, I, I didn't get a chance to try it out. So I'm just kind of a weird hero right now. He either like, I feel like he either like stomps his lane or he gets kind of stomped himself and he gets behind. It's kind of rough. Um, I like this 10 talent. I think that I'm a big fan of that one. Because those, uh, the, the health and regen talents are weaker than the damage ones kind of. He's kind of like a snowball hero. And buying Ags, it, it was like close to being really good. Up to your tooltip. Valve. Um, wow, look at that. Almost nobody got the regen. Wow, everybody gets damage apparently. Okay. Oh, man, these are both so good. These are both so good. 3.5 second crush cooldown. Corrosive haze on dispel. Well, they're both so good. Um, I could definitely see going, becoming tank manslaughter kind of. And eggs gives you, man, I'm so bad at the alphabet. And eggs um, gives you, oh man, I didn't look at the other stuff well enough. 40% uh, status resistance and the 12 armor. 35 health regen I think is pretty good. You still probably need a blank dagger on this hero by all means. And um, you can definitely like play your lane pretty well, I think, by being survivable. I don't know if I'd grab this talent. But eight is not bad at all. And that paired with like, I don't know, maybe it's time to go... Is it time to go like slaughter our radiances, guys? Genuinely could be. Now that I think about it. Just go safe lane. Rush like Midas into Radiance or something. I mean, why not? It's probably better than Lifestealer. 
Midas Radiance and go Ags. I'm on to something. I am definitely on to something. Just run around with lots of movement speed. You can get like 8 health regen at 10. Get the health talent or something. Run around slapping people. Doesn't farm enough and Radiance doesn't synergize with his ult. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. It doesn't synergize with his ult very well. But it kind of synergizes. I mean, you could arguably say the same thing about Lifestealer a little bit. And that Feast doesn't synergize with Radiance. Mason plays Midas Slardar. I mean, Midas Slardar is not at all weird. That is super normal. But um, I don't think anybody goes Radiance. But I'm looking at like health regen talents and this regen. It's like you're obviously very tanky, right? You want to pair tankiness with something like Radiance where you can stay alive. Could be something that you could do. Health talent would help offset the fact that you went Midas Radiance. Hero's got pretty decent armor. He's got really good movement speed. I don't know. I could see it working. I'd like to try it in a pub game maybe. You could probably outlane most offlane heroes, actually, even though you're a safe lane. I could see it working. 30% lifesteal, get ags, slap people. I don't know. I kind of like the idea. Maybe go uh, Vanguard if you really need it. I don't think you should, though. Probably not worth getting. Spirit Breaker, also your regen would come a little bit late because it's at like level 10, which is kind of after you need it. Um, Nether Strike bonus damage reduce. Okay. Nerfs the Spirit Breaker. Um, I guess he was being used a decent amount. It just makes him a little bit worse, moderately worse early. His magic damage decreased. 30 damage isn't like game changing, but it's definitely going to make bursting heroes a little bit harder. Um, Sven base damage reduced by 2. Stormhammer cooldown increased again. Oof, rough ones. And Warcry shield base health reduced um, in the late game. A little bit worse late game. Techies base int increased by 3. This is a pretty big buff. That's 3 damage. That's, uh, what, 36 mana? Which is kind of a lot. Refraction no longer provides bonus damage when attacking allied units. I did see some complaints about that. The Conquer nerf. Um, but it's kind of fair, I think, because uh, the whole the whole reason that you attack your units instead of your enemy units when you go for splashes is because attacking your units doesn't burn your refraction charges. So basically, if you turn on refraction you only ever attack your creeps for denies, you never lose refraction. It's kind of busted, right? Because you're still splashing. But it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, eh, it's probably a little bit too good, right? So here's here's your trade-off now. If you refract, but you want to deny, you don't lose a charge, which is how it should be, but you don't get the bonus damage to be able to like overpower people. So it's not going to be easy to get denies and get last hits as easily. You can't control your wave as well. TA nerf is insane. It's definitely really big. I assume you got to remember that like there's going to be some play play test difference and like people will get used to it a little bit and ad ad adjust. It's like I said, it's not going to be easy to just be like, oh shit, this creeps low, that creeps low, deny, get both. You you gotta you gotta be a little bit better. Basically, you have to make the decisions. You have, like, who's to say that you can't still deny the creep and get the last hit better than your opponent anyways because you have more damage or because you're threatening splash. You know, like it's still super viable to get both. It's not like you're not going to buy your Wraith Bands or something, you know? And it's not like you're not going to have Treads and a Blightstone. Like, you can still get those denies. But I'm sure that TA players are very upset about this. By all means. I'm just saying that, like, in a really competitive lane, yes, this is going to matter. For sure. But against, like, an empty lane or something. Or against, like, I don't know, maybe I just play enough, like, varied skill players that it doesn't feel that bad to me, but... It doesn't feel like the end of the world. It feels like something that will be learned to play around. That's what it feels like to me. I know it's a huge nerf for ease of play and longevity and refraction damage, but it's not going to like ruin the whole universe. Does it still take a damage charge? It probably won't, no. We can test it. It's, it's not going to take a damage charge. I think it's a huge nerf, but it's also extremely warranted. Yeah, I, that's, that's basically the thing, right? Huh. Oh, fuck. I needed this. Kind of. Still 
doesn't cost a charge. Look guys, it still splashes. It's almost like it's still good. <laughs> you see what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's, it's obviously gonna hurt, but it, it's especially gonna hurt when you're like level three and on. You're not gonna be able to just like power deny shit. Cause there, there's just like, there's so many matchups, like you're thinking, like the, this is this is the issue basically. You're if, if you're seeing this nerf, you're complaining about now playing TA against heroes that have like competitive last hitting capabilities and stuff. But the problem is that there's other heroes that are like that you're matching TA against that are also busted. That's basically the issue. Is that you have to fucking play TA these days to like dominate somebody in last hits. Bring that shit down, you know? Like, let, let more mid heroes be viable. I think it's better for the game, personally. You can't deny every creep to the enemy, which is bullshit. Yeah, that's very true. Denying it under enemy tower and harass the enemy at the same time is a lot worse than before. Are you saying it is now currently or because of the patch? I'm confused. I'm not saying that she's not countered by a couple of very good mid heroes, but my point is that, I don't know, like everything that holds me back in my mind is like, oh, but I'm sure TA against X matchups is probably really hard. It definitely is, I'm sure. But it's also true that um, you can nerf those heroes also so that this is less bullshit against the vast majority of mid heroes. Like, what if I want to play Crystal Maiden mid, guys? You know, nerf TA, get it over with. I'm ready. Conjure image uh, damage reduced by 40%, a little bit harder. I, th I think that's super fair, actually. The the TB illusions are actually so easy to kill. And almost any hero that I'm playing, I don't ever feel that vulnerable to these. Any hero that has AoE, I kill them easily. If you compare it to like PL illusions or something like that, those are way harder to kill. But Conjure image illusions, they take so long to spawn, I think this is completely reasonable for, for a TB buff. Uh, base int increased by two. Naga illusions forgot. Naga illusions are fucking annoying. How much do those have? Let's mess up my tab again. Three fifty. So basically, the conjure image illusions and mirror image illusions are now about in line. But Naga illusions, I don't know why, but they feel way worse. I I don't think her agility gain is that different than what TB has. She probably still has comparable numbers of agility, but I would guess that TB buys less raw agility items than Naga does because you don't buy like Diffusal Blade you still get a lot of Wraith Bands but you buy like what Manta, Dragonlance, BKB that's like hybrid strength items Naga doesn't buy those she's just like Diffusal, Manta, Scotty, Butterfly, Heart you know it's those kinds of things so that's probably why the TB illusions are even easier to kill than the Naga ones more raw HP than um, armor and she gets a lot of raw HP too. Her strength gain is also way better than Terrorblades is. That's probably the other thing. Tinker base int increased by two heat seeking missile cooldown reduced to eighteen. I wish I had this when I picked heat seeking missile and ability draft the other day without rearm. Eighteen second. This is, I think, more fair. This is like one of those skills that was actually a little bit out of line. I'd like to think that Valve uh, buffed this ability after watching my ability draft game, where they realized like, hey. Does heat seeking missile really need to be at 25 seconds? It's like like the difference between like basically for if you have mana, this d literally doesn't change the hero in the fucking slightest. But if you're pre 6 pre level 6 but without rearm or if there's a really long fight, it will be a small buff. This is like the biggest ability draft change if anything, more than anything else. How do you get back into Dota after an extended break where you haven't kept up with the game at all? Like, reading patch notes doesn't really help if you're seven patches behind. You're damn right. I'm glad you're here, though. Spec. Um, just go play. Um, it helps to play with somebody that's currently up to date. That way, when you're confused, you can ask questions. Like, last night, I was playing with my friend Tom, who I haven't played Dota with in a long time. And he was playing PA against a Wind Ranger, and she had an Ags. And she used Wind Ranger, a Wind Run, and he was attacking her. And then uh, her Wind Run an ended, and he, like, blink striked and was attacking. But then he just stood still in auto attack till he died. And I was like, it looked like he'd given up. And then I was like, oh, he's confused. And I was like, oh, Ags gives two win run charges. Now he's like, oh, okay, okay. It helps to have somebody with you, I think, that can explain things and give you the, the basically be your own like patch notes purge in your game with you. I think that's the best way to do it. Um, or another thing you can do is go to the uh, Dota 2 wiki and go to change logs on heroes that you're confused on or to keep that up on another monitor. That way, if you're confused in game, you can go check there and read the last couple of patches. That could be a good way too. 
Um, Pit of Malice AoE increased by 10. Tiny, tiny buff. Um, 10 tile change, more movement speed, more cast range, and I like this a lot actually. And then, uh, so the other, the talent to the left previously, what it would do is when enemy heroes died within your Atrophy Aura, you would get more temporary damage, 15 more, because it gives you like 30 to 60 damage per hero that dies, but depending on what level. So that would give you an extra 15. It was like pretty garbage, right? You can't necessarily get a talent thinking like, boy, I sure hope somebody dies so that I can get a temporary damage that will turn into me occasionally attack. It's like really rare, right? It's more like you win a team fight, you could push towers. Um, I think this one is a better change. This would be Atrophy right now gives two to five damage based on enemy heroes that die within your aura. So now you could actually become a right click hero depending on how many kills you get. I think this is actually a pretty decent talent to get now. So that's what 12 damage. You're basically a better version of Legion Commander at this point. Um, got a 70 attack speed talent at 20 as well. Also, does this work? Let me test something. Something else. This could also better justify by an Aghanim Scepter on the hero, if this works. So the way Ags works is that the half half of the damage bonus you have um, gets applied to your allies. So I want to level. I want what I want to check is how much you get. Spawn a few of these guys. Uh, I don't know, we'll just do it the easy way. Damn it. Okay. So I got a lot of damage. It's getting 185 right now. So what we need to see, and we'll find out in about 60 seconds, is... I mean, I could do the math, I guess. What was that, half? Shit. Okay, it doesn't work like this. I was wondering if this permanent damage increase would also be split with your ags. It doesn't, though. It's only based on what you get from enemies. So actually, you could argue that if you liked getting that talent before ags, it's actually worse now than it was before. Because this bonus damage is not good to your allies. He's got 185 here. So, all right. Well, test confirmed, and it does not give you that bonus. But I think that talent is probably not bad. Because even if you are, I don't know, do, do you need that much more damage on the hero? Seven more per kill is not game changing, but it definitely helps. Could much better justify getting the 70 attack speed talent. I don't know, maybe there's some like weird Underlord builds that we could see come into the game. Possibly a bug. Just suicide, I don't understand. Oh, to get the damage back, that's what you meant. I don't does it go away? I'm not sure. Talent is hilarious and overthrow, I believe that. Alright, Vengeful Spirit. Oh, increase. I love Venge. Uh base int by two, base damage by two. That's actually really big. Her base damage is garbage. It's like forty three or something after you buy two ironwood branches. But now it's gonna be forty five. Beautiful. Look at that. 45 damage. So the reason her base damage is so low, which is probably needed, is because with Wave of Terror level 1, you're increasing your damage by a lot. Because you're lowering their armor by 3. So your damage damage has to be comparatively low, otherwise it'd be a little too broken. Especially if you end up being like Venge Core or something like that. It'd be way too good. No, it's gone. Um, the Int is also huge, though. Look at, look at the mana difference. Two more Int. Yeah, it's still 12. I double checked. 24. I mean, I actually had 225 mana before. That's garbage. You can get like two Ironwood branches and sit a lot prettier here. And now this two base damage increase also is going to apply to like Vengeance Aura too. If you get Vengeance Aura, you get more damage from the Aura. That kind of a thing. Like, this is actually pretty good. Like level 2, 50 plus 6 with two Ironwood branches and Vengeance Aura. Like, I, look how much damage this is already actually. I think Venge is going to be a much better 3 than, than she was before. And support, both. Like, bas basically everything is going to be better for Venge now. Better everything. More mana. To cast stuns. 
to lane to zone. This is this is actually pretty damn big buffs as far as I'm concerned. I think this is very good. Very good. Um, poison attack damage per missing health is buffed. Um, okay. A little bit of Viper buffs. You know, I bear, I basically haven't played him since the Atos Greaves build came out, which is weird. I, I This is one thing that I really hate about myself sometimes is that all these heroes that I really like playing, as soon as they get good, I just don't play them anymore. So I never, I never, I never get to enjoy that. I guess I never get to enjoy the like the heroes that I like are really good. I just stop playing them as soon as they get good because I just, I don't know. I want to go figure out other stuff. And it's like I feel like I'm taking fun away from myself consistently. But anyways, uh, Viper getting buffed here. 0.25 at all levels is huge, especially the first point. The first point is basically not going to be garbage. It's a six second cooldown, so it's really rare to use, but that's not bad. Um, Visage soul assumption damage increase by 10. So that is an extra 60 damage at level four with max charges. Which right now is what, six times 75 plus 20? Yeah. So it's 470 damage instead of 410. That's a pretty big damage increase. And crap, they changed the talent too. And this one as well. Oh, that's pretty big. So 100 damage now. That's actually a lot. This talent is actually really good. I didn't. I think this is a, this is an ice frog being like, guys, get this talent. Like this, that's an impressive amount of damage. I mean, we all know what six times a hundred is, right, guys? That's six hundred plus twenty. So if you get that talent at twenty, your soul assumption is doing six twenty damage. You could have soul assumption hits two targets too. It's really hard not to get the familiar talents, I would argue. Like the experience gain, whatever, maybe you can pass that one up. But Soul Assumption hits two, 620 damage. Does it prioritize heroes? If it prioritizes heroes, then this is really good. Because this is a nuke every four seconds. I know um, Fly played a little bit for EG as a support. So, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe Visage support can be viable now. I haven't tried it yet. I tried it like one game, I think. Uh, Warlock getting nerfs because Warlock is probably the best support in the patch right now. Um, Fatal Bond's cooldown other than like IO uh, and Chen. Fatal Bond's cooldown increased. So basically nerfs to early game Fatal Bond's in a big way. No longer bounce on Roshan. That's really needed. Um, you can probably still cast Fatal Bond's on Roshan. But Lincoln's would need to be broken and then you can cast it on Roshan. Then it'll probably work. I would, I would assume that's how it works. We can test it really quick. Let's finish and I'll go test it. Fatal Bonds considers units with another Fatal Bonds as lower priority. We'll still jump to them if no other units are in range. Okay. So what this also means is that doing a double Fatal Bonds is going to be less easy. Um, because if you have like Grimstroke, Fatal Bonds, the combo is like disgusting. We've seen it. Um, it basically increases your damage by an extra 100% when you use an AoE spell. And one Fatal Bonds already increases it by like 100% if everyone gets hit. So getting two Fatal Bonds is like bonkers. You're doing triple damage with your nukes. So um, what it means is that if there's a lot of creeps there and heroes and you cast Fatal Bonds twice, it's just going to latch like probably the creeps and the heroes kind of separately. It'll grab the heroes first and then it'll grab the creeps, I would guess. But if it's only five heroes, they're still going to get double Fatal Bonded. So fights away from like creep summons and stuff like that are going to be harder to abuse. But either way, this is still like a rare situation anyways. Where you get double Fatal Bonds, you need like Refresher Orb or Grimstroke Ulti or Stolen Spells. You can't really do that, I don't think. I don't know if Lotus Orbs will work, but there's not that many double Fatal Bonds. Uh, but I think these are these are basically like really small case. Not, this one isn't small case because pro players do set these situations up. Um, but this is definitely going to hurt Warlock's abusive, like stupid abusive viability, which is good. And it's the same with Roche. Taking Roche fights around Warlock is going to be less hard now. Or, or at least like stealing Roche around a contested Warlock is going to be harder. And this Fatal Bonds nerf for the laning stage is not that big of a deal. It kind of feels like the Maledic nerf a little bit. But I think it's pretty justified. The skill was actually pretty obnoxious. It, even like a laning Warlock is going to really be hurt by this. Because so you can't just cast it like every creep wave. Well, you can, I guess, 36. But... It's going to be way less hard to just abuse it for harassment now. So small laning, small to moderate laning nerf. 
and these ones are rare but abusable potentially but it kind of removes like bullshit instances that are easy to do so i think these are overall very good nurse to warlock that's still gonna the hero will still see play i'm sure um zoo space armor increased by one that helps make up for his uh them robbing me from his armor talent at 10 and static field damage went up by one again what is that other static field talent? 1.5. So now you can get up to 13.5% of current health damage dealt. That's like insane how much damage that is. It's actually so good. 12% of their max of their current health. So if you have 1,000 health and you get hit by a nuke, you're going to be losing like 100 health just from static field. Some good stuff, man. All right, cool. Now we just got to go test Warlock quick. Play Zeus in many matchups. Yeah, no kidding. Anybody that buys any health items. All right, let's see if this lags out like it did for me yesterday. Or er, bugs. I got a black screen here and it stayed there for a very long time. Boop. Prepare for battle. Uh, level up. Okay. just can't target Roshan. It's gone. Okay, it just literally doesn't work on him anymore. Okay. Literally, it just can't target Roshan at all. It should say, it should literally say, cannot target Roshan. Although maybe in the past Fatal Bonds couldn't be clicked on Roshan and that's why it says no longer bounces on Roshan because before it couldn't be targeted on him. So maybe I'm wrong here, but um, I thought it could be slightly more clear. Okay, cool. So let's make a list of things that I want to try. I want to play Visage. Let me close this notepad and do another one. Visage support. Play some Zeus maybe. Nice, I spelled Zeus right for the first time in my life. Uh, Viper. Viper question mark. Venge all day. Carry Slaughter. Oh, you're so right. Carry Slaughter with Radiance. Um, Underlord pass. <laughs> Definitely not TA suckers. Um, maybe some Ricky? Question mark. Pugna, Pudge is always fun with slow talent, maybe. Even though it's only a 4% increase. Man, it's got to be so good against like like Manta melee carries, basically. Heroes that like want to be able to Manta and run away. So like, even like Morphlings, but Morphlings can wait for him. Like um, Alchemist, that kind of a, that kind of a thing. I could really see Rot Slow be really good. Because it would be so much harder for you to escape if you can slow him for 50% permanently through, through Manta style. Um, ooh, Ogre. Ogre. Ogre Core. Rana Axe. It ain't good. Uh, Luna. Oh, yeah, Lich. Lich with Aether. Question mark. Keeper of the Light. Io to, to prove the haters. Io for the haters. Um... Quaswex Invoker. Now that TA sucks, lol. Uh, Healbot Enchantress. Drow Ags plus Crit plus Lifesteal? Question mark. can't proc this if people are close though it's the downside but you still get your attack speed more dazzle dazzle core maybe i should play dark willow more now 
I only played her like three or four times, I think. Clinx is relatively fun. You know, honestly, I could still play Chen. He was barely, barely nerfed for me, the way that I've played him a little. Oh, bounty core eggs. Bounty. Bounty three eggs. Give him some actual team fight instead of having no team fight because he's a bounty hunter. Bloodsticker and Barrider. Okay, cool. So basically, I just wrote down everybody that's on the list of heroes that just got patched. Uh, should I play rank? 